Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Nurse Rachel and I'm excited to have you back here. And in this video, we are going to be talking about lab values part two. In my last video, I talked about lab values part one and under which I discussed electrolyte CBC, which is the complete blood count in your renal function test. In this video, we're going to be talking about lipid panel coagulation test, your ABGs and some drug levels. Okay. So just a reminder, some of the values I'm going to be talking about might vary a little bit from what you have in your taste book or, your, or some website. Not to worry, the values are always very close. And you just need to know these lab values so you can tell when a lab value is very low or very high. And that would help you to answer your questions if you see any in your standard tests or your class quizzes. So let's start off with the lipid panel. So for lipid panel, we have the LDL, which is your low density lipoprotein, and the range is supposed to be less than 100 milligrams per deciliter. It's supposed to be less than 100 milligrams per deciliter. Then for your HDL, which is high density lipoprotein, the level is supposed to be higher than 60 milligrams per deciliter. Also, we have your total cholesterol, which is supposed to be lower than 200 milligrams per deciliter. We also have triglycerides, which is supposed to be lower than 150 milligrams per deciliter. Then let's talk about your coagulation test. For coagulation test, we have the PT, which is the prothrombin time. We also have the INR, which is the international normalized rate. These two lab values is used to check the clotting time for a patient that is taking, that is on warfarin or coumadin. So for PT, which is your prothrombin time, for a patient that is healthy, a person that is healthy and is not taking warfarin, the range for their prothrombin time, their PT is supposed to be between 11 to 12.5 seconds. Then if, if a patient is taking warfarin or, or, or coumadin, like we know, the range is going to go up a little bit, probably 2.5 to 3.5 times higher because they are on a blood thinner. Then for your international normalized rate, the INR, the normal range for a healthy person is supposed to be 1.1 and lower. So ranges from 1.1 and lower. But if a, if a patient is taking warfarin, the normal range that we expect for the INR goes between 2 to 3. That is for a patient that is on warfarin. Okay? So on the coagulation test, we also have the APTT, which is the activated partial pro, uh, thromboplastin time. APTT, your activated partial thromboplastin time. So it's a lab value that is used to check for uh, clotting time for patients that are on heparin. So APTT is for heparin. And then the normal range for a patient that is taking heparin, it's supposed to be between 60 to 80. But if a person is healthy and they are not on heparin, their APTT is supposed to be between 30 and 40 seconds. But if a patient is taking heparin, the level goes up to between 60 to 80 seconds because they are on a blood thinner called heparin. We also have the D-dimer. D-dimer is usually a, a, a lab that is taken for patients that are experiencing DVT, deep vein thrombosis, or patients that are experiencing pulmonary embolism. So, and for this, their lab values is supposed to be, for a normal patient, the D-dimer level is supposed to be uh, between 0 0.5 milligrams, micrograms per liter and lower. Okay, so the normal range that we're supposed to see for D-dimer is supposed to be 0 0.5. So for D-dimer is 0 0.5, less than 0 0.5 micrograms per liter. Okay, now let's talk about the ABGs. So for ABGs, there are some lab values that are very important that you know, so you can be able to interpret the ABG results. So you can be able to say, okay, this person have respiratory acidosis or alkalosis. So those lab values that are very important for ABG, ABGs is your uh, blood pH, normal blood pH. So for normal blood pH, we have 
between 7.35 to 7.45. That is your normal blood pH. We also have the PCO2, which is the partial carbon dioxide level that is supposed to be between 35 to 45. Then we have the HCO2, which is your, your bicarbonate. Normal range is 22 to 26. In some textbooks, you will see probably 22 to 28 or thereabout, but they are always very close. Okay. Then we also have your PCO2. PO2, which is the partial pressure of oxygen, that is supposed to be within the range of 80 to 100. So you need to know this, the, the, your blood pH, your PCO2, your HCO3, and read your ABG results. Lastly, let's talk about some drug levels that are important. For drug levels, theophylline, and the lantern, which is also called phenytone, they share the same therapeutic range, which runs between 10 to 20 micrograms per ml. We also have digoxin. Therapeutic range for digoxin is 0 0.5 to 2 nanograms per ml. And then there is also lithium. Lithium level goes between 0 0.5 to 1.2 milli equilibrium per liter. We also have salicylate or aspirin. Therapeutic range for aspirin is between 100 to 200 milligram per liter. Then we also have vaporic acid. Also vaporic acid therapeutic range for that is between 50 to 100 microgram per ml. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell and share this video. Thank you for watching. And also do not forget to watch part one of this lab value if you haven't. It's a very interesting video. Thank you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.